Hello and uh, welcome to what is the first in a series of videos where I'll be talking about some of the principles and concepts in aviation. To start off with, I'd like to talk about the effects of forward and aft CFGs on an aircraft. So, to start off with, we have to have a basic idea of some of the forces acting upon an aircraft. So, on an aircraft in cruise flight, and this is my diagram of an aircraft, I hope that's somewhat self-explanatory, we have the tail surfaces and the rest of the fuselage. So the four forces that are going to be acting on an aircraft is going to be our weight acting in the downwards direction. That's going to be acting out of the center of gravity. Our drag acting opposite to the thrust. We're going to have our lift acting in the upwards direction. That's going to be acting out of the center of pressure. And our thrust acting forward, of course. So, for this lesson plan, we'll be mainly concerned with our drag, our lift, and our weight. So, let's scroll down here. And for the first configuration, we'll be looking at the forward center of gravity. Quickly redraw the aircraft over here. Now, what we'll have to do is just quickly relabel our forces. This will be our lift acting out of the center pressure again. If uh, some of these terms aren't uh, aren't clicking with you, don't be discouraged. I'll be uh, covering them all in a later video. I'll draw my weight acting out of the center of gravity and I'll, I'll slightly embellish this just so we can get the idea across. Acting in the downwards direction. That'll be our weight. Now what we'll have to do is to understand this we'll have to have a fairly basic idea of mechanics and the main idea is the moment force actually acting around a central point so given that our pivot point will actually be the center of gravity all the axles axes sorry will act around the center of gravity the lift is actually going to be creating a nose down moment uh, a pitching force on the aircraft. So to maintain cruise flight what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to use our tail surfaces and create a force opposing that. So what this is actually going to do is we're going to we're going to deflect our, our elevator or horizontal stabilizer upward into the relative airflow and this is going to be creating a small force in the downwards direction. So to combat this uh, added force in the downwards direction, it's going to be coupled with our weight. Our lift is actually going to have to compensate with that. So what we're going to need is a, a slightly larger lift component. I'll just draw that out. This is all embellished, but just to get the idea across. So this is actually done uh, well simply by actually increasing the angle of attack. So by increasing the angle of attack, what we're actually doing is we're going to actually be increasing the amount of induced drag which is going to be decreasing our true airspeed so our true airspeed is going to be going down because of that induced drag caused by that increased amount of lift but we're also going to be increasing the stall speed the stall speed is going to go up because we only have so much angle of attack to play with the the aircraft will stall at a given angle of attack not an airspeed so if we're already increasing the angle of attack in order to compensate, to, to get this extra lift component, we're going to have an increased stall speed. The next situation I'd like to talk about is going to be the aft center of gravity. So let's just write it out here and just redraw our aircraft. So a tail surface and our lift acting out of the center of pressure and our weight draw this maybe I'll just draw this a little closer really embellish that idea there we are so our weight acting in a downwards direction label everything nicely there of course our center of uh, gravity and our center of pressure not to confuse them so given that uh, 
with this configuration, we're not going to have as much of a distance between these two, uh, between the the force acting in the upwards direction. We're actually going to have a smaller, our smaller moment induced around the center of gravity. So therefore, we're only going to actually have to deflect our horizontal stabilizer a fraction of what we did in the original case, meaning a smaller force in the downwards direction, which will result, of course, in a lesser increase in lift. So what's this going to mean with a reference to our true airspeed? Well, our true airspeed is going to go up. We don't need as much lift. Therefore, our induced drag is going to be less. So there, we have a less, uh, we have an increase. Sorry, uh, true airspeed. Our stall speed is going to go down. It's going to go down because our angle of attack isn't going to be increased. Because again, we don't have to compensate for that increase in lift. So, with that in mind, we we, we might be wondering. It's just like, okay, well. Uh, how much of a how much of a moment force is this actually acting? And for that, we're we're going to need some basic knowledge of uh, mechanics. And the formula is actually this: it's our moment is going to equal uh, simply force times the distance. So, the distance being measured from the center of gravity over to the center of pressure, and the force being the lifting uh, force in the upwards direction this moment is going to equal this force on the nose on uh, forcing down on the nose now with this in mind we can actually figure out what this force in the back is actually going to be just simply by actually rearranging this we can find out that well our force in the back is equal to the moment caused time uh, all over the distance so with a much larger moment we can see that we're going to have a larger force. Similarly, we have a smaller force down here, and it's going to be caused because we have a smaller moment. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, if this is all true, then why don't we always just load the aircraft all the way to the aft, just load everything in the back? Well, there's a bit of a problem with this. The main problem with having this actually in this configuration is going to be actually due to the stall characteristics. In a stall, we have we have a condition where our our wing surfaces, our ailerons, are not going to be effective. They're only going to aggravate everything. So we're only going to actually have the use of our tail surface to actually get us out of a stall. Given that we have a lesser distance between the center of gravity and the tail surface, our tail surface isn't going to be as effective. So if we actually want to, uh, if if we want to increase our true airspeed and decrease our stall speed, we're doing it at the risk of not being able to get out of a stall if one actually were to occur. So that you can see, this is a little bit troublesome. But the generally, the aircraft is going to be lower, uh, loaded in a more forward situation. So that's the end of the lesson plan. I hope that was uh, somewhat helpful for you. And uh, I'd like any comments that you would have. Any uh, and. Uh, I'll be making uh, more videos shortly. Thank you for watching. Thanks.